after propaganda radio focus to kill the prophet if you are killed the prophet the rise for hate defamation the anger how many more words did you use to blast who's one character to make a new NPR, National Public Radio, finds itself in the public eye and in the national spotlight in a heated $250 million defamation lawsuit filed by the controversial musician, filmmaker, and activist, Billy Yeager. My name is Damon Blake. I'm the manager of Billy and Anais Yeager. You know, it's a traditional, probably 2,000 word article, uh, but it mercilessly eviscerates this artist for the past 10, 15 years has been doing nothing but humanitarian works, being a big activist uh, with his wife. There's a very long trail of, of documents and, and people who have been admirers of Billy and, and fans. And to compare all of this to this one article, which interviewed no one who knows Billy, um, and which completely destroyed his life and the life of his wife, uh, it's insidious. The Honorable, the Chief Justice, and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. All persons having business before the Honorable, the Supreme Court of the United States are admonished to draw near and give their attention, for the court is now sitting. God save the United States and this Honorable Court. It led Billy into a deep, deep depression. Uh, he's on all sorts of medications now after two suicide attempts, two visits to a hospital where um, you know, his, his own wife, Anias, has had to uh, finding him in a state of suicidal depression. There's the question of humanity. As a journalist, you're expected to show humanity. And what I mean by that is you're expected to be aware of the consequences of what you publish and what you broadcast. It's not the job of a journalist to do undue harm. It's our job to protect people. It first came to my attention in 2015 when the producer submitted the film that changed the world to my film festival, the Red Dirt International Film Festival, located in Stillwater, Oklahoma. That film went on to win the most inspirational film award of that season. I'm a minister here in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, just saw uh, the film that changed the world. I am still processing. It was very, very emotional. It had a lot of images that evoke a lot of visceral feelings in me, um, challenge a lot of thoughts and notions, and in a lot of ways felt for me like I was encountering Jesus, encountering something very countercultural. I just saw a screening of the film that changed the world. It's an affirmation of the truth of our being, of our souls and our spirit, and it's also an invitation to confront all the things that keep us from our divinity. This is a beautiful film. Anybody who sees it is going to be transformed in a way that gives more life. Uh, there were two ministers present. One was a Unitarian minister in the local community, and one was a uh, Unity minister. And they both loved the film so much so that they hung out in the lobby afterwards and wanted to get on camera expressing their feelings towards the movie, as several of us did. But it was purported that that was a completely false um, that, that, that we were all actors. It was purported the film did not even exist. It was inferred that my film festival did not exist, uh, that I do not exist. Uh, it seems bizarre that um, with how much press my own film festival has put online about the film, where I openly put my own personal phone number, 
several different email addresses. I'm a very accessible person on purpose. He could have reached out to me and I feel like maybe uh, Andrew Flanagan sensed that I um, would have been a cheerleader for them and would not have wanted anything positive uh, on record from me or from anyone else uh, who may be a supporter, um, and which there are many. This has to do with um, a film that we're going to make that's going to change the world. So when I read the posting, I knew instantly that I belonged to it. Once his wife Anais entered his life, the two of them fomented a mission to uh, bring more peace to the world, uh, you know, through changing people's awareness and their consciousness. I never had any fear or any doubt and that we had to do this project. That is our purpose and meaning. When we begin the film Jesus of Malibu, we had a burning desire, a definitive purpose and determination that what we wanted was to make a unique contribution to the world for the better of humanity. Seeking enlightenment is not an easy road. It is ex extremely difficult. It was never meant to be easy. You lose things and, and you give up the world. A film crew has made a stop in the Nebraska Panhandle in their quest to enlighten people living in today's fast-paced world. To the benefits of nature, the Yeagers decided to give up all their worldly possessions, travel, and make a movie, causing people to think outside the box. The day William and Anias met, they knew they had been brought together for a divine purpose, to seek truth and to share this truth by creating a transcendental film. The Jaegers relinquished their comfortable life in society and headed west toward the desert in a 14-foot travel trailer, writing, producing, acting, directing, and composing all the music for the film trilogy, Jesus of Malibu, living and surviving in ghost towns and transforming themselves into a living, breathing script. They completed the film all by themselves with no money or even a one-person film crew. You are not who you think you are. You actually have a purpose and a meaning in this life. There's a reason that you were born. Jesus, Socrates, Gandhi, they follow love. Not affection, but all creative giving force. The flesh longs for it things, acceptance, the world's acceptance, vanities, possessions. The spirit longs for nothing. I want you to help me to change the world. this uh, benefit, charity benefit concert uh, that the Jaegers were set to perform the following spring. The, the proceeds for that were going to go forth to provide wheelchairs. Uh, there are thousands of children whose job, their daily existence, is to crawl around and diffuse leftover landmines from previous wars. And so many of them are missing legs and arms because of the uh, hazards in the workplace. We have, we have heard these bombs, bombs, bombs killing you. We have when I did more research on that, I thought, well, this is interesting about, you know, seven dollars to put a mine in the ground, um, several hundred to a thousand dollars to take it out, and I thought, well, no wonder governments um, are reluctant to pay for this. Um, so there were clearly issues there, and Billy came up with some really great lyrics that on the surface seemed quite simple, but they were actually very powerful, and they were just right for children to sing. And one could almost imagine these are actually the victims singing, and I really have enjoyed being a part of uh, the project and, and being friends with Billy and Anais. It's been a wonderful experience. I love their sincerity and the, just the way things come very naturally. NPR stated that Jaeger's life is one of purposeless obfuscation and that Jaeger's obsessed with fame and infamy. Billy Jaeger 
ephemera. The wool over people's eyes. He's a huckster. He's a charlatan. You know, there were many, many months of planning for this thing. And when that article hit, it all went away. And a lot of the children who were set to have wheelchairs, and now they don't because of this thing. And um, it's not just all about that one instance. This is something that can be an ongoing thing, not only for Billy and Anais, but for so many other Americans. Or you know, people, no matter where you are in the world, I mean, the, the, the power that the media has to destroy a life with a single article that's not even factual, and and then there being no recourse for that uh, is completely ludicrous. It's actually evil. And there are dozens of comments from people underneath uh, jumping on the bandwagon saying, I've never heard of this guy, but this, this sounds horrible. I'm never going to have anything to do with anything that has his name on it. Christ had empathy, compassion. He could step into another person's shoes. That's how he acquired the power, the power of God to heal, the kind that transforms. Until there's that, love, love movies, love songs, it's all bullshit. The Yeagers are also activists. They create music protest videos. They are trying to raise awareness about the suffering and injustice that happens all over the world. But when NPR published their story about Billy Yeager, they destroyed his reputation, calling him a fraud and a charlatan to over 14 million people across the world on their radio broadcast on All Things Considered. Everything in this world has a price tag. It can be bought out. Offer a million, offer a billion. Everybody can be bought, but you can't buy me. I don't need and I don't want your money and I don't want your acceptance. I don't care what anybody thinks. I care about becoming truth. And as an artist, I care about creating truth. Music can be used to create a positive effect on society, or it can produce a negative vibration and have a negative effect on society as a whole. He cannot afford an attorney. He is a pro se um, in his own case against uh, NPR. As a lawyer, I feel very lucky to uh, represent folks who rep recognize the importance of, uh, of leading this charge for the public. Two are 49 different defamatory statements within that article. The entire article had been thrown together within just a few mere hours overnight. Always had a consciousness of how you have the power to to hurt someone, and therefore your obligation to be fair, to give people an opportunity to say, hey, is this really what happened? You recognize that there's more than one side of a story, and very often there's more than two sides of a story. And as a journalist, you're responsible for looking and thinking about what are the other sides of this story. Here is one story that's being told, but what are the other opinions that I need to bring in to make the story whole? Has now led to a matter of free speech. This is now a um, issue that will go forward towards the Supreme Court. All eyes will be upon these court cases as they go forward and Billy Yeager uh, will, will, will gain the attention of those who are in power. There are way too many protests and films and lawsuits pending for this to ever go away and NPR will always resent having had any sort of involvement in trying to tarnish the lives of two humanitarians. NPR's funding comes from the public. It should be no surprise that the public's opinion about this case is surmount. The public holds the media highly accountable for getting their facts correct. Yeager's lawsuit will set new grounds for how media outlets will be held accountable, not only for defaming well-known celebrities, but for defaming a private person. Yeah,